Welcome to Living Well, your show for information and inspiration. My name is Karen Fabian and I am your host and thank you so much for watching. We've got a really interesting show for you today. We're going to devote the entire show to sharing with you the messages and the themes and actually showing you uh, the trailer for a very interesting movie called A Small Good Thing. And we've got director Pamela Tanner Bull here to walk us through what the movie's about. If you're watching the show on BNN, as always, thank you so much for watching. After every show, I post a clip uh, and the entire show on my YouTube channel, Bare Bones Yoga, and you can catch past episodes there as well. I'd like to thank the show's major sponsor, Yoga Reaches Out, a wonderful nonprofit that raises money for children's charities by hosting yoga events around the country. And I'd also like to thank my friends in Charlestown, the owners of Zoomies Coffee, for sponsoring the show. So also, one last thing, if you are watching and you have any comments or feedbacks, feedback or suggestions for future shows, please uh, just send me a note using the hashtag livingwellbnn. So let's get started. I'd like to welcome Pamela Tanner Bow. Thank you. Thanks for being on. Um, we're going to just start out with a clip, but I want to just give the, view, the viewers a little bit of information about your background. Pamela Tanner Bull is an artist, filmmaker, writer, and activist. Her directorial debut was Who Does She Think She Is, a film about five women artists who are mothers. She is co-executive producer of Academy Award winning Born Into Brothels and has executive produced many films including In a Dream, E-Team, and Obit. To find out more about the films she's involved with, you can visit the website mysticartist.com. So just to kind of set off uh, set up the clip. Let me just give the viewers a little snippet about what the film is about. A Small Good Thing explores what it takes to live a good life at the beginning of the new century. This film follows six people who, despite economic concerns and high levels of stress, have found more meaning in their lives, a closer bond with families and communities, and a deeper connection to themselves and the natural world. So let's take a look at the trailer for A Small Good Thing. I think when you don't share, that internally you're destroying yourself. I just had this deep will to be well again. You know, I'll do this for 20 years, I'll get out, I'll have a pension. But I felt like there was something missing. That's intense. We know several things about suffering and optimal living. We really had tremendous stress in our life. My father has a really hard time wrapping his head around, like, you're not going to a nine to five job. You have two children. Some people know what they want to do with their lives. It hasn't been me. We're taught that any sort of vulnerability is weakness. One of the greatest predictors of health and happiness is your social ties. Do you walk through life with people you feel connected to? The percentage of Americans who say, I'm very happy with my life, peaked in the mid-1950s and has gone downhill since. What brings real fulfillment? Every one of us in this lifetime has a calling and has a responsibility to that calling. I was drawn into doing what I feel that I was born to do. Ah, wow. <laughs> Even just watching the trailer, I mean, I had the luxury of seeing the whole film because I, I got access to it. And um, even just seeing that for me is so powerful, um, I think in part because I know kind of more about it. But, um, you know, it has such important messages, I think, that are so relevant in today's world. So maybe we could start out. Just tell us what inspired you to make this film. <clears throat> well, I had come to a point in my life where uh, in many, many ways I had everything that 
people aspire to in terms of a good life or the American dream mm -hmm. even. I have a wonderful family. Uh, my work is something that I actually like to do, <laughs> which is great. Right. Um, and I'd come to that over a period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had had plenty of struggles, don't get me wrong. Sure. But um, I'd gotten through them, I think, in a pretty good way. And yet, it seemed that despite all of those things, I was feeling a little dissatisfied, disconnected. It was very hard to get together with friends. Mm -hmm. People seemed so busy. And it was hard even to get together with my family, my extended family. Um, I managed, but still. So I began to think, well, if you've, a, if you've achieved certain things that you thought were going to give you a sense of, wow, this is great, mm -hmm. now my life is set. Mm -hmm. You know, financial success, uh, a house that's comfortable, a couple of cars, mm -hmm. uh, vacations. And you still feel a little bit like, now what? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the beginning of the film. That was mm -hmm. why I went and uh, explored this issue. And also it seemed as I spoke to people both in around Massachusetts where I live, but also around the country, people kept saying over and over and over, I'm, I'm too busy. I can't, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to get together with my friends. I don't have time to cook. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to get together for vacations or holidays. Their work was overwhelming. So there was a lot of, uh, I had a sense that there was a lot of people who were struggling. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see, is there something that we can actually take charge of? Mm -hmm. So this was kind of the seed that, mm -hmm. it, that it grew from. You know, I was reading the press kit uh, in preparation for, for the uh, show today. And I found it interesting in looking at some of the statistics, mm -hmm. because there is a research background to the film as well. And I, you know, one of the things that stood out to me, young adults whose primary motivation is money, image, and fame show higher levels of depression and more physical ailments. And 40% of our happiness depends on our daily activities. So you know, I can tell from the, from the trailer, there's kind of that foreboding message in a way that people are in the film are demonstrating they understand those statistics and they're taking action. Mm -hmm. Was that part of kind it of? It definitely was. I think that we have a culture that, in a way, it, it asks um, our young people to to look at uh, celebrities. It's a celebrity culture, mm -hmm. and even and you know we have the business uh, world that seems to be let's let's go after the big bucks. And mm -hmm. this has been true in this country for a long time. Right now, what's happening is that. Uh, the economic reality is such that a very few people can make it to the top and the rest of us can't. So given that, we're, we're going to be disappointed if we think that we're going to get fame, fortune, and you know, be rock stars. Right, if, if you we kind of tie our happiness to yeah, those. Yeah, if we tie our happiness to, to those, those things, things it'll, you'll probably be disappointed. Even, and, and here's the interesting thing. Even if you do achieve a certain kind of fame, people generally feel like that's gosh that's not what i thought it was going right, to be right so the film was investigating what is it that actually helps you feel good about your life mm -hmm. and do we and and the research shows something really interesting it's less about your circumstances than it is about how you approach your circumstances mm -hmm. so even if you live in a neighborhood that is kind of run down and you're, you're poor and you'd like to have a better job, or let's just say, mm -hmm. you have much more control over your sense of well-being than you think. Mm -hmm. And even at the other end of the spectrum, if you live in a gated community and have a 14-room house, mm -hmm. um, you can be very lonely and isolated. Mm -hmm. So what are those things that give us a sense of well-being? That's what the film investigates. Interesting, very thought-provoking. Well, let's do this. Let's take a little break, and when we come back, we're going to dive in a little bit further. So stay tuned.
All right, so we are back uh, with Pamela Tanner Bull, director of A Small Good Thing. So let's talk a little bit about um, the unique way that this film is being released, because I want viewers to know how they can see the film. Um, when we first released the film, which was, uh, well, we did some film festivals, mm -hmm. which is pretty uh, typical. And then we thought this film really, people love to talk about it mm -hmm. because it brings up some issues about why, how can I make my life better? Mm -hmm. What am I doing? I'm so busy, you want me mm -hmm. to do one more thing. Mm -hmm. So rather than make it complicated, we, we set out to do something called community screenings so people could rent the movie and show it in their living room if they wanted. Oh. They could show it at a library or a community space. Mm -hmm. We've actually done a lot of churches. Mm. Um, so that's been going on for the last uh, six to really eight months. Okay. And now we're, we're still doing that so that you can go to the website and uh, be able to show the film in that way to mm -hmm. your friends okay. or to your bowling group mm -hmm. or your wine and cheese group. Mm -hmm. And but we are beginning also to sell the DVDs and we will we've just entered an agreement with a distribution company called uh, Kino Lorber is the company mm -hmm. and it'll be on their website. Okay. Um, it's called Alive Mind mm -hmm. and they will also be distributing it through uh, Netflix and uh, we think Amazon and some other places. Okay. So. Now I noticed when I read the press kit, you even give people suggested questions mm -hmm. to kind of spark. You know, I remember back when I was growing up, we would go to the movies as a family and then we'd go out to eat and we would have with my family a little like synopsis, you know, post movie discussion. Um, and I noticed you have kind of suggested questions for people. How, what has been the reaction? People have been stunned by this film mm. because it doesn't seem like a complicated issue and yet when you dive into it you find that in fact there's a lot of um, dissatisfaction and pain just right under the surface of people's lives and the film is is a way to uh, to open that up for people and say despite that we can live really well mm -hmm. let's figure it out how does this happen how, what can we do to make a difference in our lives? Mm -hmm. And so that is what the film really uh, brings up for people. Yeah, so people are really having reactions to it, and really, yeah, mm -hmm. that, is, that is cool. Now, you know, I think when I watch the entire film, and I don't know, I mean, maybe even from just seeing the trailer, you can kind of get a sense of the themes. Um, one of the things that I was thinking of is, you know, take, for instance, the family that's profiled, how they've, kind of sort of shunned the traditional way of, you know, having a 40 hour a week job to, to live on a farm and to live off the land. And, you know, and I wondered as, as I was watching it, is this something that, you know, to, to use kind of an overused term, millennials will be able to relate to? Is it something that people will watch and potentially think, oh, that looks great, but it's not really possible for me? The, the, the truth is, our examples are of people who have gone maybe a little bit farther than most of us mm -hmm. would go. The, the folks who are uh, full-time farmers were actually trained to be landscape, or, or they were trained in agriculture. Okay. Okay, so it made sense for them to start growing vegetables. But before that, they had a landscape business okay. out in uh, the Berkshires. So for them, that wasn't a big stretch. Now, if you're trained to be an ITT person, I doubt that you're going to go run a farm because you just <laughs> wouldn't have those skills. Right. But what we did find is that people who spend some part of their day out in the natural world are happier. Right. Even if that means walking to work through the park here in Boston. Right. You know, uh, or even if it means being uh, walking from your front door uh, a few blocks in your neighborhood. So that's easy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but their, their example is more extreme. They're actually out there nurturing the land. Um, a couple of the folks in the film had had some issues with addiction, and that's very common in our culture. Mm -hmm. um, but rather than hiding it and feeling extreme shame, which is what a lot of us want to do, instead they found that if they could find a group of people that they actually trusted, 
that things change for them mm -hmm. almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And that actually holds true. It doesn't matter where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter if you're addicted to exercise or to uh, alcohol or what have you. Mm -hmm. So one of the big lessons that we learn in the film and is that, you know, we think we need to get ahead and put all of our focus on our work. But instead, what we're finding is that if you make time for for friends, people that mm. you trust, mm -hmm. you actually have a lot more happiness mm. in your life. Yeah, and you you're were, healthier. Yeah, yeah, as you were talking, I was thinking connection, connection, mm -hmm. like that seems yeah. to be a resonating theme. It is, but the tricky thing about connection is if you're hiding a lot of things, because mm. you don't want people to know you're in huge debt, or uh, you don't want people to know that you lost your job, or that you, you don't like your parents, or if you want to keep all of that to yourself, um, then you will have trouble making good connections mm -hmm. with people. And so, do you think connection via the internet is different than? It's very different, and in fact, um, it's it's there's uh, some research that shows that we actually curate ourselves on the internet, and by that I mean ah. we put our best foot forward always. We're the not, Instagram image. We're not out there saying I lost my purse this morning and the dog threw up and um, my boss yelled at me. We're not putting those things out there. Those are things that you tell friends that you can trust. Mm -hmm. So in person, in person. <laughs> and also there's a huge amount of conversation that happens when you mm -hmm. read people's body language. So, so it's so almost true. like one of the researchers that I spoke to talked about the internet as being kind of like uh, junk food. Mm. You know, it, 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 it so it get, you know it does give you something, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's not as rich as you not think. Not sustainable. Yeah. yeah. Um, so one last thing, kind of, and I know we've touched on it a little bit, but especially because this was such a personal kind of, it started from a personal questioning that you had about your own life. What do you most hope that people will get from this film? I hope that people will take uh, the time to watch the film and say oh, I don't have to become a farmer in the Berkshires because, hey, if you want, that's great. Mm -hmm. The real lesson of this film is that every single person has something that they're here for, mm. something. Mm. And we have to do the work of finding what that is. And it's what Stephen Cope says in the film, mm. what lights you up? Right, this it's is Dharma that simple. in yoga terms. Right, call it, yeah. it's Dharma. So you need to actually do a little work in finding that. And at the same time, you have, if you can spend time every single day outside, if you can reduce your time sitting, if you can move more, mm. those are not that hard, and yet we don't, we don't think about it. Mm -hmm. They make a huge difference in your sense of happiness mm -hmm. and well-being. And the third is make those phone calls. Say, hey, let's go for a walk you know, with your, or make new friends. Mm. If, you're, if your friends aren't available because they're just too stressed and busy, you gotta reach out to other people. Mm -hmm. face because face we, face. we're actually, uh, human beings are actually not individual, competitive uh, kind of people. We're actually, uh, we're animals that need the company of other animals. Mm. It's part of who we are, it's mm -hmm. our nature, mm -hmm. and we're happier when we're with people that we love and that who love us. Mm. That is so great, so inspiring. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing this. And you know, remember guys, you can uh, go on the website, which is a smallgoodthingfilm.com and find out about how you can see it in your local area or rent it and get a group of uh, people together and host a party uh, uh, in your own house or a community center someplace locally. So. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, if you have any feedback, please send me a note on Twitter using the hashtag livingwellBNN. Between now and our next show, live well.